Hey, what's up guys, it's Ruger here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make walking effects. So, I have a base plate with some terrain, and we're going to be specifically making snow walking effects. So, when you walk on snow, you will have some snow walking effects, and when you leave the snow, you won't have any effects. So, I have a character here that I just made a starter character, since... I will not be attaching any attachments via scripts. Just easier to, you know, make, um, attach the attachments as a starter character. And inside the starter character, in the left leg and in the right leg, I have an attachment, and in each attachment, there is an effect. The attachment is on the bottom of the leg, and whenever you play the effect, you will see that there is no and what will happen is when the player walks this effect will play and when the player stands still this effect will not play so I have an attachment in both the left leg and the right leg great so let's put the starter character back into starter player and let's create a local script and we're going to put this local script into starter character script. Let's call this script walking snow effect. Great. So, first thing to do is get the player. Local player equals game um, dot players dot local player. We then wait for the character local character equals player dot character or player dot character added wait and let's actually put this w capital because I like to make it perfect. So we get the character like this. Pretty much you get the character right away or you know you wait until the character is added. Let's then get the humanoid. Local humanoid equals character wait for child humanoid. Great. Now we have the humanoid. Now what we're going to do is create a variable called is walking. And we're gonna make it false. So pretty much this will be turning to true when the player is walking and false when the player isn't walking. So now we're gonna do humanoid dot running connect function. So pretty much running is an event which fires whenever you know the humanoid starts running or stops running. So walking or not walking. And then the parameter that is passed when this event fired is the speed. So pretty much, we using the speed, we can detect if the player is walking or not. If the speed equals zero, then he's not walking. Or he or she. Otherwise, the player is walking. Great, so now we can detect whenever the player is walking and not walking. We can actually test this if you really want to by doing this. Let's get actually the attachment. So let's separate. Let's add a little area, and then local left effect equals character wait for child left leg. Yeah, it's too simple. And then we're gonna wait for child. Set the left leg, which is attachment. Attachment. And then inside that attachment, we wait for child snow. Wait for child snow. Nice. 
So this is the left foot, okay? And then... Right... Effect. And this will be the right leg. So these are the two effects. And now we can just do this. Left to play... Dot... Enabled equals false. And the same thing for right effect. And then true that he is walking. So if we play, make sure there aren't any errors. Nope, no errors. And you can see as soon as we walk, there is an effect. And as soon as we stop walk, there isn't an effect. Nice. So now we just make it so that the effect only fires when we're on the snow. Pretty simple actually. So what we'll do actually is, let's create a new variable. Local is on snow equals false. And then I'm gonna add a new event which fires whenever the material under the player changes. So humanoid get property changed signal for material. It's so pretty much get property change signal is it's a property of humanoid that gets changed. Now we connect function material. And now we just compare if material equals enum dot floor material or enum dot materials dot snow then is on snow equals true else is on snow equals false and we can do this if um, is walking then we play it and then right here we'll just make it to false no matter what there and right here actually what we're gonna do is gonna make this false and if is on snow then So pretty much like that, and then so pretty much whenever we walk right here, so this this thing fires, we make sure that you know is walking is true. So if the player isn't on snow, he'll change the snow while we're walking. It'll detect that. But if the player starts walking on in the snow, then it will make sure that the effects are enabled because this won't fire unless the material changes. This will fire whenever the player starts walking. That's why we'll have something playing the effects right here, as well as right here. So let's actually just test it before I further explain how it works. Great. And then... Oh, something is not firing. Let's check what's up with the thing. Okay, my bad. So I figured out what I did wrong and kind of stupidly added that because that's not how we detect the floor material. We'll detect the floor material by checking the humanoid floor material. There we go, like this, play. Now if we walk and we get onto the snow, the effects start playing. And now if we stop, they stop playing. Start. They start playing. Get right here, it stops. If we jump onto here without walking, it doesn't play, and it starts playing. Great, so we've created some nice walking effects. Now, this is just some really simple code that can be actually used to add walking sound effects, and so on. So if you want to add a 
walking sound effects, I'd suggest instead of just, you know, creating a separate script, you could technically just integrate all of it into the RBX character sound, so the Roblox character sound, which is located in starter player and then in starter player scripts. So what you would do is you just copy this Stop game, paste it back inside, and then you can add all the sounds right here. That's how I do it sometimes, however, people do it differently. Anyways, that will be it for today. It's a shorter video, and we learned a bit more about Roblox events and how they're useful. Thank you for watching. Bye.